Good morning, Reverend Bob Cotter here for our service of Holy Communion 1, beginning on page 180. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The collect for today, the third Sunday after Trinity. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to hear us, and grant that we to whom thou hast given an hearty desire to pray, may by thy mighty aid be defended and comforted in all dangers and adversities, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now come to our epistle. The epistle is written in the sixth chapter of Romans, beginning at verse 12. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. Present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to any one as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But well, thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations, for just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 40th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. But whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Thanks be to thee, O Lord. The Nicene Creed I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us man and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, he was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, just a few thoughts there on the Gospel passage. In recent months now, there has been a lot of uh, justified and very pleasing support for the NHS. That uh, support also has extended to, to neighbours that people have been more aware of than perhaps in the past. And now we're coming to a phase as churches uh, are flagged up as being uh, earmarked for reopening, that it'll be a time to support ministry and worship and all that uh, pertains to, to church life. Uh, in ways that will be different, perhaps, and definitely different from the way that things went on in the past, if all the uh, regulations in relation to social distancing and keeping our congregations safe are going to be applied. So we see that there is no hierarchy, uh, again, in, in the whole business of Christian worship and witness because whilst one person might be taking the stage uh, as a frontline uh, speaker or a conductor of a particular service, that, that could not go ahead uh, without all the ancillary support, all the uh, very important tasks which needed to be done in the past, and all the different new tasks which will need to be done uh, when churches reopen and people are invited in. A strange new world it will be as we come, so to speak, blinking out of the sunlight into our darkened churches reopened again and wondering uh, what the systems are and where we go and what happens and what the rules are to keep everyone safe. And it will be a time of the thinking through of, of the best practices uh, and uh, interpreting where the or gaps perhaps in the in the regulations because it's difficult for uh, those who think through um, such issues to, to be absolutely 100% um, fail safe in, in terms of covering every eventuality. We just pray uh, that all those who will have the, um, the control and the, the task and the responsibility of ensuring safe worship in, in, in the coming weeks and months will we'll have wisdom and will have a continued sense of service and the importance of what they do in all the various little and larger tasks which support the whole. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living ever God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. Grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, 
and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue give grace o heavenly father to all bishops and curates that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word but rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments to all thy people give thy heavenly grace especially to this congregation here present that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness o lord to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble sorrow need sickness or any other adversity we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom grant this o father for jesus christ's sake our only mediator and advocate ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours intend to lead a new life following the commandments of god and walking from henceforth in his holy ways draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort make your humble confession to almighty god meekly kneeling upon your knees almighty god father of our lord jesus christ maker of all things judge of all men we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought word and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings the remembrance of them is grievous unto us the burden of them is intolerable have mercy upon us have mercy upon us most merciful father for thy son our lord jesus christ's sake forgive us all that is past grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honour and glory of thy name through jesus christ our lord amen almighty god our heavenly father who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness bring you to everlasting life through jesus christ our lord amen Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners hear also what st john saith if any man sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous he is the propitiation for our sins lift up your hearts we lift them up unto the lord let us give thanks unto our lord god his meat and right so to do his very meet right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and at all places give thanks unto thee o lord holy father almighty everlasting god therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of thy glory glory be to thee o lord most high Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, 
and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy does give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, he made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shared for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee. Feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Mighty and ever-living God, we must heartily thank thee, for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us. We are very members, incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. But also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. We most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God, the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen.